What's up, everybody? This is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Men, and this is Project Nerd. Hello, Project Nerd Nation. This is Dane Michael for Nerdcast, and we've got a very special episode of Nerdcast. I'm here with Ladios Muhammad, who is the star of Prudence, which is uh, Rudy Womack's horror short, which has played at Tallgrass Film Festival that Project Nerd covered, and also at the Netherland Film Festival in Colorado, which was on November 6th. And um, first of all, welcome, Ladios. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us. And um, I do, do want to let everybody know to stick around because... We have a interview that we conducted from the live stream booth at Tallgrass Film Festival with Rudy. And it's about, uh, I think he was there about 35 or 40 minutes with us. So um, he was chatting us up and having a great time. Um, so that will follow this interview. But um, first I want to ask you, because I just watched Prudence for a second time. Okay. Um, I want to ask you how you found out about this project and um, what le- basically what led you to this. Oh, wow. It was was totally divine intervention. Um, My friend, uh, he's also a colleague of mine. He moved to Atlanta and we're both theater backgrounds as well as film. And so he sent me a, hey, there's an audition. Someone had forwarded it to him because they thought he was local um, to, to him to see if he knew any actors, female black actors, and he forwarded it back to me. And so I submitted that way. And uh, uh, everything is history. I mean, <laughs> I, guess, I guess I nailed it because uh, Rudy did. He loved the he loved the audition tape. And uh, I did some extra coaching to make sure I'm doing it right. I had my friend look at it. I was like, wait, wait, should I do it like this? So that's how I, how I learned about the project, because I think he sent the auditions to um, theater uh, casting agent, you know, theater casting directors uh, versus film casting directors. So. What was he looking for in terms of the uh- audition because there is um it's a wordless film i mean almost wordless i would say yeah um for prudence's part anyway um so what was he like looking for and what did you know about the story when you were auditioning for it did did you read the whole thing did was the script presented no (laughs) <laughs> when you <laughs> when you audition you get a you get a side and usually sometimes the sides are either in the script or they're not but um i i just knew it was something that was a horror horror story and it was kind of witchy and um he was looking for someone um who thing the thing about film is you you need to be able to act without acting not and not necessarily using words, whereas theater is the opposite. It's big. So whatever I did, I touched on the the facial expressions and the details of what he was looking for. And someone who's definitely flexible. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was he was amazing. We we had a meetup after I booked it. And he came and um we had uh, coffee and we spent an hour and he was like, I just want to let you know we're going to be filming in 30 degree weather in the snow. And I was like, whoa. And I had to walk barefooted and all that's real. That's real snow. Um, So I was going to ask because there's, there's times when it looks like it's um, when she's walking around, when she first Mm -hmm. leaves the house, it looks like it's falling like so perfectly that I'm like, is that like CGI snow? That Uh, was was CGI snow where I never said, well, it was real ice. (laughs) They put some ice and made it come down, but that was real snow on the ground. And okay. we were filming like, what is it, 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning in the snow. And he was just amazing. So he'd be like, okay, get her boots on. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cold. But um, it, it was it was a it was a very uh, nice challenge to see, you know, to take my acting level to the next level of, you know, of just blending in and, and conforming to that character. The character wasn't thinking about snow. There was very minimal dialogue. And I had to look like I'm not cold and I was freezing. <laughs> <laughs> My feet were like, I, I literally, before we started training, about a month, I would go to um, the parks because, it, you know, it's still cold in the in the streams and put my feet in the water to see how long I can handle the the cold water hitting my feet. But it still was cold. <laughs> where was this? Uh, where in Colorado was this film? Oh, geez. You know what? I'm so sorry. I don't remember. Mm, it's not far from here. It's probably a 
couple hours from Denver, maybe hour and a half. I'm so sorry. I don't remember, but it was a historical. Yeah. Well, it wasn't in Denver. It was outside of Denver about, about an hour or so. And it was, um, we were at a historical location. So the cabin that we filmed in was a real cabin. It was not staged. That was real authentic cabin. Everything was authentic. The, the, but it's, um, I think it's a historical place that he got and, uh, it was amazing. And I was like, Oh my God. So, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely way colder there than it was in Denver (laughs) that night. So so that kind of thing had to like, I mean, the authenticity of the cabin had to, I mean, make it much more easier for you, I guess, to put yourself into that role because it's what, like, 1893, I think, is the setting yeah. for this. Um, yeah. Well, 1893, but but I don't want to spoil anything, but that's, um, um, we can. <laughs> we I can mean, discuss. everything in the cabin was originally built. I mean, I think there was like a, a, a bear rug or something. I was like, is this real? This real fur? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Not that I'm vegan or anything, but I was like, oh, my God. These are real animals. I mean, everything hanging up. It was it was amazing. It was so amazing. So are you by chance a fan of or have you at least seen um, some of the original episodes of the the Twilight Zone series from the 60s? Oh, yeah, I was was definitely a fan of the Twilights. Okay. Uh Um, so what I like about Prudence and um, it definitely has that element. It has that element of even if we're um, Rudy to expand the story, I think Mm -hmm. it could become like an episode of the twilight zone in my opinion. Um, And so that's what I loved about it. Um, But uh, even the, even starting out in black and white, you know um, the photography, it just, it just has that feeling. And um, for the viewers out there, if you like the episode with Agnes Moorhead, um, who was a staple of Orson Welles um, Mm -hmm. acting troupe, uh, it's called nothing in the dark. Um, that is a wordless episode of the Twilight Zone. And I forgot to ask Rudy, um, because I hadn't seen it at the time that we interviewed him. Uh-huh. Um, but I forgot to ask him if he was at all influenced by that or if he's seen that, um, because there's some great parallels between Prudence and Nothing in the Dark. So That's um, interesting you said that. And and I'm and I'm not sure if I'm crossing over. I feel like it's Twilight Zone or it could have been Alfred Hitchcock, but I did, I did, I know I'm thinking it is Twilight Zone because I did mention this to him when we were discussing the film. And I said, this reminds me of an episode, and I believe it's in Twilight Zone, where this woman goes into a, it's a little bit more dialogue, but it was, she goes into a jewelry store to purchase something, and then she goes to return it because it was broken. And it kept, they were like, go to this floor, go to this floor, go to this floor. Oh, um, and then come so that find- is the after hours. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. So she I was, was like, a uh, oh, spoil alert for everybody. Yeah, I don't want to really say. Old but you know she was her, a mannequin. She was a mannequin, and then I was like, this. So you, you know what I'm talking about. It reminds me of when she she found out she was yeah. a mannequin. So yeah, so you know that. So, so that was uh, Anne Francis things. was in that episode. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's yeah. So I was right. It was Twilight, and I was, he was. I was like, did you see that? So <laughs> I, I don't know if he's seen it, but yeah, I get what you're saying because it was like, huh. She didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the one that I, I believe the one I said was nothing in the dark, but I think I got the episode wrong. Um, the one I'm talking about is called the invaders mm-hmm. and it's like a woman who lives by herself and she hears noises um, in and around her home, outside mm-hmm. her home. I'm going to give the ending away because it's not like a huge spoiler, but there's yeah. like these tiny little astronauts that are like invading her home <laughs> in like a spaceship, like the size of her her palm you know oh so. my goodness she's <laughs> hearing things huh yeah. so <laughs> yeah really cool that. um definitely i think anybody can look at a lot of elements of horror movies or sci-fi movies today and say you know the twilight zone is the twilight zone could have been the influence for that or it just could be because twilight zone covered so much ground that that's just a coincidence but you know <laughs> my understanding was uh, it, it, it was a little bit, he went a little bit more in depth, like um, about historically. Cause I said, well, why did you want specifically a black woman? And he said a lot of the history of there were um, black settlers and cowboys 
uh, African Americans, cowboys, and and settlers that really resided here in Colorado, which I I knew, and so they're not in the history, and so he wanted to kind of focus on that. Now, why he went the direction he did without the <laughs> spoiler alert, yeah. that might be Twilight Zone, but, but exactly. it's all like for me, it was I like all that stuff. So this was my first horror short, and I really enjoyed it. I I love the 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 um the research he did and everything that he did, you know, was significant. It wasn't just, Oh, we're going to make a horror film. It was very significant. You know? Yeah. So. Awesome. I, I see in his future, maybe directing some of Jordan Peele's twilight zone. Uh, that would be so maybe. Cool. <laughs> and I love, I love Jordan Peele. I love yeah. him. Totally. And you can, you can star in his uh, next episode. So. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Well, I, I'm hoping, honestly, just speaking with Rudy, I'm like, are you thinking about making this a full feature? Because this would be amazing. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. So I would love to see it fleshed out. Yeah, that would be. I would, amazing. too. That would. I, I mean, there's just so many ways you can play it. And so, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Um, so aside from potentially working with Rudy again, which it sounds like you would be happy to do. Um, oh, yeah. Are there any other projects you have upcoming that you'd be able to tell us about? Yeah, right now um, I am working on an independent film. I can't tell you the name, but I okay. am. It's it's a investigative film. Um, and I have two plays coming up, one called Sword It Lies. And then I'm doing a one woman show about uh, Merle Evers. So we started the tour in 2019, but when the pandemic, we were going to go coast to coast and out of the country to Ireland worldwide. And uh, the pandemic uh, delayed it. So now we are starting all over and we um, do our first performance since the pandemic, no, um, sorry, December 3rd and 5th. Super excited. It's about a historical, incredible trailblazer female, Merle Evers, who was the wife of Medgar Evers. Okay. And actually um, he was assassinated. Um, and it took 30 years before they vindicated or, or they convicted the killer. And the only other um, performance ever done on Merle Evers, by the way, she's still alive. She's in Los uh -huh. Angeles or like in Southern California, was when Whoopi Goldberg did it in um, Mississippi Burning. The Burning, Mississippi Burning, I think it was. Called. Oh, Mississippi Burning. Mississippi have you, Burning. Have you seen um, or has she seen the performance? We've been trying to get her team to get her to see their performance. So we are, after we launch this one, we plan to try to get this in theaters or, you know, stage theaters in okay. California. And we have been trying to get a hold of her team. They approved the, the you know, they approved it. They said it was fine, okay. but we just haven't gotten her to come. <laughs> I have been, we've been emailing and everything. So it's been amazing. So that would be a, a total thrill for it would be a thrill. For everybody, I, I, I want her think. to do it so bad. And, you know, so um, I, I and, and we we approached it a different dynamic because she was a very reserve, very um, polished woman. Even when the day she found out that her husband's murderer was convicted, she was just very reserved with her being ecstatic. But we we're showing this kind of totally different angle of her just not holding it together. I mean, you know, the inside, the emotions. And so mm -hmm. it was very informative because she went from being an activist to a politician. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. So uh, what, where is the first um, performance? Going so to it's going to be here in Colorado at okay. Christian um, Denver Christian Bible Church. Um, this will okay. be the second time we have performed there. In fact, the first time we've performed in Denver was there. Um, so we're going to bring it back and we're doing two shows. Um, we partnered up with Emerge Colorado, which is a nonprofit organization which trains women of color on to be on the ballot to become Democratic politicians. Um, so, yeah, awesome. super excited. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and then as far as uh, Prudence goes, did you happen to attend the Netherlands Film Festival? I know that was in person this year. Uh, was that the one in uh, Long Island? Um, the one that was just on uh, November 6th, on this past Saturday. Uh, no, I didn't attend that one. Okay. I, I did attend the one in Longmont. I wanted to oh, get okay. to the one in New Orleans. And I uh, missed the one in, in L.A. 
they've they've had so many. <laughs> yeah, he's taking it ever. Like when he uh, when he approached us at Tallgrass, he had his little card that had you know the Prudence card that he made up. Yeah, um, promotional card. And I was like, I know this because um, your actress who plays Prudence wants us to to interview um, interview her. So. Yeah. Here we are. And um, I was like, well, we're going to interview you too. And great. So, awesome. So how was it? How was the film festival in the Netherlands? Was it a big turnout? So I didn't. Uh, so I'm actually in Iowa. So I oh, okay. was not able to make it out this past mm-hmm. weekend for that. Um, I believe it is a small town. Okay. And a single theater, but I, I've heard that it's big. That's what one of the other interview interviewees has told me. Yeah. But um, so I don't know. I guess yeah. we'll have to hear from some others. Uh, but. Well, maybe we'll get to Iowa, huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Rudy isn't done promoting this yet, but no, he does, he does need to make it into a feature. So that's what what yeah, I'll try and we'll talk him into next. So do, and I'll put a buzz in his ear too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your time, and it's been um, great chatting with you. And um, where can people? find more about you, um, social media and so on and so forth. Sure. Everything is in Ladias Muhammad. I'm on Instagram, on YouTube, also on Facebook. Um, I also have uh, my website with, which is uh, valorliving.org. Um, if you want to sign up on my newsletter, you'll know, always know what's coming out. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you again for your time. And don't forget folks, stick around for our interview with Rudy right after this. Thank you. It's coming in. First guest. Awesome. First guest. Let's, let's do this. How are we doing this? Who's who we have? Well, I know this guy. Scoot, no. I know who this guy is. Oh, you got to come in. Join us. Right. Rudy. Do I need to switch my <laughs> Rudy. 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 This is how you welcome Rudy Womack. Hi, everyone. Good Hi, to be Rudy. Here. <laughs> so you've got a film called Prudence. I do. Yes. In the festival. It's in the... Um, it's is it in, in the, the horror shorts yeah, competition? Yeah, horror slash bloody shorts is what it's called. Although mine's not bloody at all, but fits the horror category. When is that block of uh, films? Uh, it's tomorrow, Saturday uh, at 545 at Groover Labs. Excellent. So it's right up the street from here. Tell- okay, and we were talking about this. I know most of us uh, you know, live in Colorado but you have a really good connection in your movie to Colorado. You want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah. So we actually filmed in Fort Lupton, Colorado. So oh. it's about 30, uh, about 30 minutes north of Denver. Uh, there's a very interesting place up there called the South Platte Historic Society, if I got all that correct. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's quite interesting. They do a lot of reenactments. They do a lot of uh, preservation work for historic buildings and so on and so forth. So if you actually go to their property, they have a fort, they have a school from the early 1900s, they're uh, rebuilding a barn from the 1800s, and uh, we shot at a cabin which was built in the 1850s or thereabouts, and so the the cabin is period accurate, all the stuff inside of the cabin is period accurate, so... That's it uh, it it made one heck of a location to shoot in. I saw, is is this your first time at Tallgrass? Yeah, this is my first time here. I uh, I've been wanting to come to this festival for quite some time, so it's quite a privilege to actually be here, especially with a horror film because I know it's such a small little block, so it's kind of hard to get in. So right. I, I was I was pretty excited to be here. Yeah. Um, what's your give us like your one sentence slug line for Prudence? In the winter of. 1897 prudence hears strange chanting outside of her cabin oh there you go Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, uh, i'm in so you've been to festivals before then oh yeah of course okay. yeah you, you i've been like, oh cool like i've been wanting to come to tall grass but you you've done other festivals yeah i've i've been doing films since you know i was yay tall um so i've been to a lot of festivals uh most recently, I was at Dances with Films in Los Angeles, oh, so yeah. I was very excited to be at that festival. Next week, I'm going to be in Utah and Provo for Film Quest. So right now, I'm just kind of deep in the festival run. All with Prudence, or do you have other stuff out? All of it with Prudence, except I do have a film that's playing in Texas that's a family drama about a dog, <laughs> and that's in December. So is that a full feature or is that a short as well? No, that one's a short. It's called Chippy. It's 
literally I shot it in my living room with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> so it's complete. It's the exact opposite of prudence <laughs> in every possible way. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> now I'm curious. <laughs> Is your dog named Chippy? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's like she she wouldn't respond to anything else, so we we're just like, ah, fine, whatever. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be. <laughs> Tell us about your involvement with the Wyoming Film Festival. Yeah. Great. Um. So. The Wyoming International Film Festival started by a man, uh, his name is Alan O'Ashey, and, you know, he, he was there to champion, you know, up and coming filmmakers from Wyoming. I'm originally from Wyoming, so that's why it's real near and dear okay. to my heart. Um, but Alan has retired. He's moving on to greener pastures, and he was just kind of going to let the festival go. And I was like, no, you can't do that. It's so important. You know, filmmakers need a voice. Uh, they, they need a place to connect with other filmmakers, other creatives. And so graciously, Alan allowed me to step in. So this is actually going to be my first year's executive director of oh, the wow. film festival. And we're, Excellent. we're already making some big changes. We changed our venue to a larger venue to accommodate a bigger audience. We expanded from a two day festival to a three day festival now. So we're going to allow more films in have more filmmakers. You were talking about documentaries. We actually partnered with the International Documentary Association. See, that's awesome. So <laughs> we're, we're trying to champion nonfiction filmmaking. I as love well. it. Yeah. And we're, we're really moving forward. So I'm very excited yeah. to be doing that. Where in yeah. Wyoming does that take place? That's in Cheyenne. Cheyenne. So it's the capital. It's only two hours north of Denver. So y'all yeah. should uh, drop <laughs> in. No, no, we talked last night. I believe, you, if I recall correctly, you said you were also a ranch hand at one point. Yeah, I worked at uh, Terry Bison Ranch for a little bit, which was grueling and terrible. <laughs> we're still fact checking all of this. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, respect, but everybody works at Terry Bison Ranch at one point or another. It's like a rite of passage if you're from Cheyenne. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like that's, that's the next documentary. It's, that's not it's, fiction. it's either that or you work at one of the fireworks stands that's right across the border. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a documentary ranch hands turned filmmakers. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be like about you and probably John Ford, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome. I think that's what we were talking about earlier, guys. I, I you know, the biggest thing we, we we went to the gala last night. Yeah, so saw an fun. amazing tag that said filmmaker, and we started talking. And it's amazing how that little conversation can lead to so many more things here at Talga. And it's it's really incredible how people who are kind of from one region don't run into each other, but they go somewhere else, like Tallgrass, and they meet up. I love that kind of stuff. Well, I absolutely love that. I want to bring it back because you, you said that this was one that you've you've been wanting to come to. Yeah. So you've known about this festival. Yeah. I first found out about it actually when I was in film school. One of my classmates had played in this. God, man, this was back in 2013 or so. So it, it was quite some time ago. Uh, one of my classmates played in this festival, just would not stop talking about how great this festival is, all the people, all the wonderful filmmakers, and of course, the films themselves and the quality of them and so ever since then it's been on my radar and i've i've really wanted to come so i'm so lucky to be on here is, is it living yeah. up to what what oh what yeah told? oh absolutely i mean the the fact that there's so much hospitality the fact that like right now there's a panel of producers going on right after yeah. this there's another shorts block there's two documentaries and then there's a couple of narrative features playing on later on like the schedule is just so packed there's an it's, incredible it's daily live stream yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. for example <laughs> for example <laughs> no this is my first time to ever come to this film festival too i mean they, these guys have been coming for years this is my first time coming and i'm blown away by it yeah is it I, living up great. for you oh yeah i'm super oh. excited to see how the rest of the weekend plays out and it's really been fun to just chat with people and what's well, also your first film festival as ever well. yeah i've never been so to a she's film never festival. been to like a, a it's all downhill from here <laughs> right <laughs> I, started, I haven't I started either. A good one. This is my first ever film festival as well. Yes. Really? So. That surprises me, actually. So You're such a film buff. All other film festivals that I attend are going to have a lot to live up to. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, yes. you hit it right. Like, I think the biggest thing we, we've always appreciated is the, is the volunteers. Yeah. And the community support and the engagement from the community in this area has been amazing. The gala last night, we were... Okay, so were we at the Botanica or the Botanical Gardens? 
Botanica. For me. All, all I know is I got <laughs> stuffed in the back of a car and wound up at a party. So, Whoa, you know. I hate when I that mean, happens. <laughs> <laughs> <a great> start. <laughs> we, we talked about it. It's like there's Botanica. And like, I, listen, I couldn't understand what was going listen, on last night. Listen, it's a botanical gardens okay. that they call Botanica. Oh, so that's the name. It's of it. like a fun name for the botanical gardens. You garden. didn't see the big sign when you drive I in that says Botanica, Botanica. And I might have I crushed like a few trees that are. It was. It was, it was, so. <laughs> I, was I, I, I feel bad if I. Play it, I it, you were gonna it, say it, it was dark. We're all hanging out next to the one tree that had a light. Yeah. That's, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except I felt like I was around a campfire with a flashlight under yeah. my face. I was like, this can't be a flashlight. It, it was an "Are you afraid of the dark?" kind of like night where we were just gathered there. Gary, <laughs> Gary, I gotta tell you, I was pretty certain you were gonna say. I might have crushed a few beers and couldn't remember it. Oh, yeah, that, that definitely well, like that hey, also happened. Right, that there was a lot well, that of was later. Yeah. There was a lot of Stella coming out last night, and I was really appreciative. So it was so cool, though. But it's been it's been awesome. And you, you talk about this festival and what this festival does, you know, for creatives. I had to ask like the other day, like, when did we shorten it to creatives? <laughs> you know, it used to be like there were like creative people. Now it's just like the Every like tagline is now created. <laughs> Carrie brought this up last I, night. I, I feel like because multimedia and everything has expanded so dramatically, especially in the last like three decades in particular, you know, it, it used to be if you were an artist, you you had one discipline. Now I feel like most artists have to have multiple disciplines and they also have to have some kind of business acumen. That's true. In, in order to get their artwork out there, in order to make the connections, meet the right people, so on and so that forth. Is true. So I, I feel like creatives is kind of the I don't know catch all for all of that. Kind of yeah. an umbrella for everything that's underneath. It. Yeah, yeah, I mean, especially you know, I I work as an editor as a day job, and we even we even kind of break it down in the business of who's doing like the admin and who's doing the creative, you know, because yeah. the, the admin runs the business. They're the ones like, you know, finding clients and doing budgets and all that stuff. That's stuff. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the paper industry term. Oh yeah. Saying. Oh, this yeah. isn't just somebody that, Hey, he's a creative. This is an industry term that is used all, all the time. Like even sitting down, like editing and everything. Sometimes you'll have the creative editor with the creative director and then you'll have like the post team or the ad or you know the technical guys who come in and they're like make, make all these cuts that we just yeah, like told make, you to. <laughs> make sure it works you know it, it, it will play in germany as well as you know the philippines as well as canada or wherever we're sending the video off to yeah. so you're totally right though you can have all the talent in the world but nowadays you have to have an expanded skill set oh, that absolutely. does include business you know, as part of it, you have to have that analytical sort of to get anywhere because it's very it's so competitive, too. Oh, absolutely. And it's it's getting even more competitive. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a double edged sword. That also means we have more avenues to get our work out, to meet people, to collaborate, so on and so forth. So, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll take the bad with the good any day. Yeah. I'd rather be a yeah. filmmaker now than 40 years ago. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. It is. But that's a good point, though. There are a lot more avenues and channels for exposure now as a filmmaker that were probably more difficult you know, yeah. 50 years ago. Well, I mean, even this right now, like way back in the day, you would have had to have a radio license and, you know, invest three hundred thousand dollars in gear and so on and so forth to do broadcast oh iggy it, did it just it's still <laughs> yeah well there you go he didn't need him i told him not to apply for him <laughs> you know what i mean like wait was, you have a radio license you couldn't just put it out there like... <laughs> yeah you had to go to class and learn how to do morse code <laughs> yeah. I, I love it man. that's what like, you know we, we've been talking about this festival all of us, you know, I think most of us know, like, we're all volunteers. We all do this out of fun. Yeah. You know, I mean, how did how did it start for you? You know, you said you've been in the industry for a while. You've been an editor. How did the, the whole entertainment scene start for you? Oh, man, I have the best story ever. Um, <laughs> so when 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 I was just a little kid, uh, we were actually living in Casper, Wyoming. And this was back when newspapers were still a thing. <laughs> I've um, heard of those, yeah. And uh, there's this big headline that Hollywood is going to come to Casper and they're looking for extras and so on and so forth. And like, I got really excited. 
And I was begging my mom, can we go see, can we go see? And they were shooting like way off in the prairie, like two hours away from the town or something. She was like, no, I'm not driving out there. And I just, I wouldn't stop pestering her for a month. And finally she was like, fine, we'll go and see. So she takes me all the way out to a place called Hell's Half Acre to see a Hollywood movie be shot. Oh. And that movie was Starship Troopers. No. <laughs> wow. Really? What a great experience. Is, it, is that why Casper Van Dien was in it? Probably. Is that, <laughs> is that where he got his name from? You know what? I have never made that connection until this moment right now. It's kind of blown my mind. <laughs> wow. And then so, like, of course, I wanted to see the movie when it came in. You know, they were in post-production forever on that film. And so, I don't know, I was like eight, 10, something like that. Uh, when the movie finally came out and again, I was begging my parents, I want to see it. I want to see it. Cause we went to the desert and we shot, you know, we see them shoot the thing and they're like, no, it's rated R. It's a too pretty young. hard R yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Like <laughs> really hard R. So they just, they wouldn't let me see it. They wouldn't let me see it. So one night I'm hanging out at my friend's house and his parents had rented it on Blockbuster. Right. And so I waited till like two o'clock in the morning and snuck down into the living room nice. and like rewound the tape <laughs> and like dialed it to like like two or three on the volume like you're set, like, next like to really the television. close to it and just scared the shit out of me. <laughs> that, <movie was> terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that that is that is awesome. I, I think I've heard a good amount of stories. That you definitely have one of the coolest ones I, that I've heard. I, I got addicted. I mean, you got you got an like, you got an yeah. MPH reference, right? Neil Patrick Harris, <laughs> yeah, there Starship you go. Troopers. Right. And you said prairie, which I think we skipped over. You had to go to the prairie to, the prairie. to, yeah. to like be watch it being filmed. I mean, that's Wyoming for you. Yeah. <laughs> so it, and then it, from there. It oh, was, I, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. You know, seeing all the guys in costumes. I mean, there was a million trucks out there. Of course, I'm a little kid. I didn't know what any of that was. I'm just like, oh, my God, it's a Hollywood movie. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. I was like, I'm going to do that for a living. So ever since then, that's that's what I've been aiming for. That's, that's, a, that's absolutely amazing. Where did you go to film school? Uh, I went to Denver at first, and then I got my master's degree in uh, Los Angeles at the New York Film Academy in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. So their branch. And then I went and got a job and learned I didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think that happens to a lot of people in any discipline yeah, after that's, school. That's yeah. right. <laughs> then the real world slaps you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, I, I'm pretty fortunate. I had a lot of good mentors along the way. I've, I've been able to meet a lot of good creatives good creative. <laughs> uh, and really just collaborate with a lot of very talented people, a lot of very knowledgeable people. And I, I really feel privileged, honestly, because there's so many incredible filmmakers and other artists and other people with incredible disciplines. And that's also one of the reasons I love going to film festivals is you never know who you're going to meet. I just yeah. uh, at dances met a woman who's been a journalist for 30 years or something to that effect. Uh, started her career in Miami, then went to Buenos Aires. So she had an interesting story. She made a documentary. It was her first time as a filmmaker. But it was so interesting speaking to this person and getting her perspective because she has an entire different life experience behind her yeah. before she got into right. film. Yeah. That's an interesting take. Yeah. She, yeah. so she, she had never made films or studied I mean, filmmaking. She be, had just done beyond news reports and stuff right. like that, but nothing, you know, as, as she was describing with like character arcs or, or really focused on uh, that real interpersonal connection instead of just like blame fact reporting. Yeah. So yeah. it, it was quite interesting hearing her perspective and, and how she came along with that. So, well, that's inspiring too, for yeah. people who maybe have a really interesting background of their life, but they have never tried anything like filmmaking or something in that creative realm. I mean, that that's mm -hmm. the thing that good art comes from your experience. If, yeah. you, if you want to make good art, go out into the world and live. Yeah. Make some mistakes, break eggs. All that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my mom. <laughs> so go do it. And, and it's, it's like the greatest like call to action is like, well, how do I do it? Well, go do it. Yeah. Go do it. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I think that's kind of the biggest thing that we've seen throughout these festivals and especially here. It's you know, talking to people, it's the experience. Yeah. And I think you know, we talked about initially in our introduction, it's it's interesting to hear how you know things finally get made. 
that this is the fifth rendition of this. We've had to go back and re-edit it and for time and for different production, we had to go back through the process. But how was it like? So are you doing, you know, you talk about creative and all the, I love how you use discipline. Mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm a big fan of certain word choices and, and being a, you know, when it comes to discipline, it's, it's, you're having to do this consistently, learn from it and continue to, to overproduce it. But how did that work with Prudence? Did you do everything for the film? Like, did you oh, direct man. it, produce it, good, edit it, everything? Or, or was it, did you allow other creatives to assist in the process? I, I genuinely believe a film is always stronger when you bring in outside talent to help build something. I, I genuinely believe that's an important part of the process. That said, Prudence. <laughs> <laughs> Prudence was kind of something I just, I, I didn't want to worry about uh all the business side of it. I didn't worry about want to worry about financiers or studios or producers or, or anything like that. I, I kind of just wanted to go back to my roots and have fun. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I had an incredible director of photography who's also one of the producers on the film. My wife is one of the producers on the film. Uh, I wrote it. I directed I edited, but of course I took my edit to people I trust and, gotcha. and got a lot of feedback to make sure. Um, the most fun I had with it was, I, I guess, costume design. I, I didn't build the <laughs> costumes. I mostly found stuff and kind of like patchworked it together. So I can't say I specifically designed it, but I've never really done that much with costumes before. So it was kind of a first time for me. And we did some pretty elaborate costumes with it. So I was, I was really excited to do that. And that's actually where a lot of my energy went to because it was completely new territory. For right. Me, and I was having a lot of fun with it. So I, I love <laughs> I love costumes. I love the whole costume aspect of movies and theater. Well, make sure you come <laughs> come to Prudence because we have some interesting. Yeah. Costumes. <laughs> that's we, great. We, we have a character with like antlers on their head. Nice. We have someone with like a crown made out of branches. Oh, you like, like really went for oh, it. Like we, you just we went all out with the you costumes. crammed that's... a lot into that five. Minutes. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> we, we had some pretty elaborate costumes. How much did you have to edit off to get it to like a, a five or six minute chunk? Did, was it, did you produce a lot more? Or did you always go with the mindset that it was going to stay in that five to six minute or eight minute realm? So I was actually aiming for three minutes okay. <laughs> and I failed miserably. Okay. <laughs> um, so it was actually uh, a little difficult to keep it under five minutes because once I got into post and started putting it together, I realized I was not going to hit my original three minute goal. Right. And so I kind of took a step back and decided, all right, fine. I'll let certain moments breathe because I, I feel like it kind of helps with the atmosphere and the mood and so on and so forth. But I'm not going to go over five minutes. And I gave myself a hard and fast Ooh. five minutes, which was actually four minutes and 30 seconds because then Credits, the credits credits for yeah. 30 seconds so um it was a little bit of a challenge because i i tend to overshoot things if any of my actors ever who have ever worked with me are listening <laughs> to this they're probably laughing right now because they're like yeah he does like 30 or 40 takes every single time so yeah. like, we did it perfectly the yeah. first time and going. yeah and i used take two <laughs> <laughs> well that's got to be such a challenge though and i think about this all the time with short films i think it's so impressive when a short film can have the whole plot and resolution and everything you know and you get the whole story in a five minute span. I couldn't do it. I could never edit something that, like that. There's certainly an art to it. And mm. especially now that I'm on the other side of the fence when it comes to film festivals and I'm seeing a lot of submissions, I, I'm definitely seeing the shorts that can do it, as you described, tell a full story, beginning, middle, end, have a character arc, everything, stuff all of that in a 10 or 15 minutes mm. or whatever it is. Like that's very difficult there is an art to yeah. the short film and to make it not feel like you cram too much yeah. in and rushed it yeah that's that's the other thing a lot of filmmakers will try to pitch a feature with a short i'm definitely guilty mm -hmm. of this myself um so what they end up doing is they try to stuff a feature oh, film in gotcha. 15 minutes and then it's just it's a mess so it's it's one of those things when when you go to make a short film you almost need to if you have a bigger idea, forget it and just focus on 
that one small moment or scene or whatever it is and yeah. just try to make that as successful as possible. And, and I'll be honest, like I'm not, you know, I mean, obviously you're, you're the EP of the, the Wyoming film festival, yep. right? Yep. So is there a, a category or a difference in the categories depending on how long the short is? Or so, is there a reason to keep it short? Or is it more the storytelling? What is it about the timelines that, uh, as it relates to a film festival? So every film festival is different. So there's a film festival up in Sheridan, Wyoming, and they have a category. It's called like the Goldilocks category, where it's like it's too long to be a short, but too short to be a feature. Oh, that's okay. fun. <laughs> and so for that festival, they will welcome 30 minute, 40 minute long shorts, which for most festivals kind of don't really fit in anywhere. So there, there's uh, there's uh, not say rules, but there's uh, a set of criteria on how to what films can be submitted yeah. into a short category. Yeah. So okay. for the Wyoming International Film Festival, we accept short films up to 25 minutes is what we do. The exception being Wyoming films. So films shot in Wyoming, we will allow those to be 30 minutes or okay. so. Because now with things like Netflix and Hulu and all this stuff taking off, it, it's it's becoming a little bit more predominant that you're seeing short films turn into pilots right. yeah. for television shows. So we are starting to open up the doors for that. We don't quite have the infrastructure yet, but mm -hmm. it is on the horizon for us to start accepting pilots and whatnot because – People, instead of trying to go make an indie film now, they're trying to make an indie pilot to get picked up for something like Netflix. Right. The because, whole purpose is a little different yeah, now. Yeah. Because all these streaming services now, they don't want a movie. They want a show that they can get their audience to binge eight hours, nine hours, so on and so forth, and then cancel it after two seasons because that's what they right, do. Right. That's what we do. Hey, <laughs> which one are we talking about? <laughs> which one? All of them. All, yeah. Anything, anything we enjoy. I would say if Squid Games gets canceled or oh, they don't do a second get, season, like, I'm, I'm going to be very mad. Or if they end it like, did you watch Squid Games? I, I have not finished the last two episodes. I got to episode seven right before I left. I'm about to ruin it for everybody. <laughs> do you not, guys are, no. I just watched the yeah. first episode. Like, I, did you really? Two, I, two days ago. So. Did you? I have not watched it yet, but it has come up so many times this week. I, can't even tell you. I don't get it. Like we, we were here two years ago and it was Parasite, right? Like Parasite took everything by storm. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, learning the backstory and some of the stuff. Now it's Squid Games. That's the most watched Netflix. Uh, I don't show get it. Like, I, I honestly is don't it, like watching wait, it. Wait, I ever, don't know ever. what the really what the attachment is where everybody gladiator match. That's what it is. Is that what it is? I mean, it's like the best way to if, if, if if you think about it, like the the idea of a uh, deadly game, like something for Saw or Hunger Games, or even if you go all the way back to like Spartacus or something like that, there is something primal, I guess, in human storytelling where we just like to see two contestants fight to the death. That's a good point. Reason. People, human beings do gravitate <laughs> yeah. towards these plots. <laughs> it's something in our nature, I guess. But we don't see it. Like this is like, how many of these kind of things have you seen in probably the last, like, say, five years? When you talk about Gladiator, that's the one that everybody references because yeah. and then maybe Spartacus or something along those lines. But outside of that, what has been that I mean, medium since then? Ten years. Hunger Games Hunger for sure. Games. Which Oh yeah. Battle, Battle Royale. Royale. I didn't even think of that. What's what's Battle Royale? It's a manga that was adapted. Is it? Is it an anime movie? Is it uh, anime? No, no. It's live action. The, okay. the adaptation's live action. It's yeah. A, it's a Rated oh, really? Hunger Games. Okay. I, I'm in. Right. So <laughs> like, apparently, there's a lot more than I initially thought there was. It's a bunch of sci-fi. So <laughs> <That's what it laughs> I haven't seen Maze Runner, but isn't it in like that same vein? Yeah, a little bit, like a, a deadly puzzle that they have to overcome. And I think the, the way what Squid Games did different is, I think, in, in some of the ones you're talking about, they they didn't really have any say in it. Right. That they were, I'm sorry, they did have say in it, right? Like they could volunteer, they could do whatever. They were drafted in. But now this one, they're active participants. Yeah. Right. They have to sign up for this. Yeah. They had multiple chances to walk away from it and they, they went for it. Yeah. I mean they, they signed a paper and everything. Did you did you do the uh the currency conversion? 
I have did. you done that? I did. Yeah. To see like how much they win. It was like stuff? 80 in, bucks at the first episode. Yeah. That That's were, like what they win they in US dollars. dollars. 80 bucks. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's like, well, it's like 45 it's billion won. It's like 100 billion won. Sometimes people are hard up. And... It's, like, it's like $40, $80 <laughs> in, in US <laughs> currency. They're like, I'm willing to die for that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, it was so great. But I, I love it. I, I've been a, a big, huge fan of all the mediums. My, my uncle asked me the other day, like, how do you watch this stuff? And my question always is how do you not no, no, there's no, so no. much content which is awesome like i have i love as, as aaron just coined the phrase right brain popcorn, brain popcorn. <laughs> so it's a new it's a like new relax and it doesn't have to be necessarily i still try to figure it out in my head but i, I like it like i'm just like oh you're you're just detaching i always call it the on and off switch you turn your brain off and watch something mm -hmm unless you're watching a documentary or, or, or something else. But right. when you're maybe tired and it's been a long day and you've been thinking all day and you kind of just want to put something on that you enjoy, maybe you've already watched it a few times too, so you don't have to think too much about it. Brain popcorn. So what's your go-to like guilty pleasure? Well, right now I'm rewatching Battlestar Galactica for like the 500th time. So. <laughs> nice. Is that a TV show? Come on. I'm sorry, man. Like, I try. I, okay. You, you bring out some Marvel or, or some DC stuff. It's, I might, it's but. Early 2000s. It's kind of when the golden age of television had just started. Uh, it it was on cable. So it was on Sci Fi Network. So it still has a, that, that tune in next week kind of a feel mm. to it, without a doubt. Um, but it's, it's the remake of the 1980s version of okay. it. Uh, but it's just really good it's really good until like the last couple of seasons it, it did game of thrones before game of thrones <laughs> it, it was like really really <laughs> impressive and then the last season or two just kind of fell off a ledge game of thrones <laughs> in space is that what you're saying yeah game of thrones in yeah. space. <laughs> a little bit more intriguing in my opinion okay <laughs> <laughs> i've not actually watched battlestar galactic I, I i maybe i've seen like one or two episodes with my with my parents but we I've never. I'm with you, Carrie. Yeah, There's a lot know. of things where I'm like, know. I know that it's popular, and I have heard of it. I was more of a SeaQuest fan, <laughs> oh, you know. Nice. So I, you know, going back <laughs> old references. I love it. Some of that stuff's being re-released, which I'm actually really a, a huge fan of. I tried to watch Saved by the Bell again. Oh, <laughs> Those, oh uh, Zach God. Morris's trash, like YouTube things, has ruined me for Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. I have yeah. not rewatched. I watch it all the time. <laughs> Saved by the Bell. Yeah. Oh man. Well, because he's doing Mark Paul Gossler's doing the podcast with the guy from. Um, Zach Morris is trash is and he really? he's watching the episodes for the first no time kidding. ever. So, so he doesn't remember filming any of them or anything. Oh, so it's geez. just like getting his take on this and, and they do, they do like write a lot of wrongs from the show when they discuss it. They're okay. Like, the okay. Parts that didn't so, age too so well. they brought in like um, a native American for the episode where yeah. running Zach is what the episode yeah. is called. Yes. Um, I forgot about They brought about in a native one. American guest on the podcast and like, got his take on everything so yeah, i mean i think that's important there is a lot of stuff that didn't age well not just in that show but in so many shows from I'm, the 90s my <laughs> my wife just watches friends just oh, again man. and again and again oh, man. and as great as that show is man there's some parts on it's like damn dude that was yeah. on tv yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> my wife always watches seinfeld okay like, we, that is <laughs> one that i could never i i, have tried, I love but i am like a fan of a laugh track yeah. When it is every five seconds, there is a laugh track. I can't do it anymore. I think it was just so that was just how it was back then, too, that I didn't even think about it. I mean, now if I hear a laugh track, it throws me off a little. It is weird. Now. It's a little yeah. weird now. But it's like Kramer enters this like the door and there's a five second laugh. I'm like, <laughs> he's done this a thousand <laughs> times. Just man. Through the door. <laughs> right. And some, like, noodle, cool. and some noodling on a bass guitar. <laughs> right. A lot of that. Yeah. Too. Like, it, it's so hard now because of all the content we get to watch, but is it so it, would that be more of a guilty pleasure or is it just some of the new stuff is just not as entertaining i i've everything ebbs and flows i mean it all depends on what's popular in the culture what people you know think is hot whatever i mean things change there's there's music that was considered incredible back in the day that when we hear it now we're like man this is really <laughs> bad synthy crap yeah yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> new kids on the block backstreet boys 98 degrees 98 degrees. lfo 
Backstreet Boys is still touring. Hey, I, if I, I were it. them, I would milk that as long as oh, I could too. Are you too. kidding? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no I mean, judgment. J- just because you're just because you were hot one day and you're not super popular doesn't mean you stop being an artist. Doesn't mean you stop loving what that's, you do. And caring, I think that's a really know? good point, though. If you have like the peak of your career because you got really popular with one particular thing, or you know, it doesn't mean that you stop being creative later. Yeah, exactly. I have to keep doing it. I recently tried to watch Cry Macho. Turn it off after like 20 minutes. Okay. Did not like it. <laughs> but I was talking with some other people. They're like, yeah, Clint Eastwood needs to retire. And I was like, man, Clint Eastwood needs to do whatever he feels like doing. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think I'm ever going to stop making movies. It doesn't yeah. matter if I just make bad movies again and again and again. I'm not going to stop. It's what I but do. But making movies yeah. versus being in those movies are yeah. two different things. <laughs> also true. <laughs> I have no idea how someone acts and directs at the same time. It's Especially when they're... Oh, yeah. How old is he? 90? <laughs> he is quite I, old now. I have no idea anymore. Like, I... When I watch him on film, it's the same face. Yeah. It's the same. It's almost like the same role. But his movies are some of the greatest movies oh. of the last probably five to ten years. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. So I will still watch them, but I, I can't do... What was the drug? The mule? Couldn't watch it. Yeah, I couldn't watch Couldn't do one. it. Him as a drug mule. No, like, I didn't watch that The one. last one of his that I saw was... Gran Torino. I haven't seen one. Oh, amazing I movie. love Gran Torino. Gran Torino is so great. great. Sully is... Sully's oh, really good. Pretty I good. forgot that was him. I yeah. did see Sully. Yeah, Sully is good. Well, didn't he do Richard Jewell? He did. Yeah, I haven't I really seen liked that. Richard, Jewell, oh, Richard well. Jewell. I liked it too. Man. I cried. I'm not going to lie. You know why? Because Kathy Bates reminded me of my mom. Aww. Like she looked and her mannerisms were so much like my own mom that by the end of the movie, I was like falling. My <laughs> I always forget the dude's name. It's, it's always like, is it Walter Paul Hauser? Paul Walter Hauser. I, I always Walter get it wrong. Hauser. That dude was awesome. He was in Kingdom, which I thought he played an amazing part. He's always played like these little roles. He was in I Tanya. Yeah. As what as the I guy he was awesome. Whatever. But uh, his acting in that was probably like that whole movie and finally publicizing that this was a, a hero. Yeah. Like he ne- he he passed away obviously before the film and everything yeah. and for but then finally get some notoriety for what he did and i grew up in knoxville tennessee so i remember the bombing in atlanta so to see that and the the culmination of it and finally get some respect to this person and and the mom but that was what they went through was awful it was awful and i do remember when it happened to you i think i was like 10 though or maybe nine like i was little and i remember when it was all going down during the olympics and stuff too in that movie um i think it was great that they showed sort of what I, I just get tired of all the controversy like you can never put out content anymore without there being some sort of controversy on the backside right the olivia wilde situation and yeah. the reporter and all of it it to me took away from richard jewel oh like, yeah because she because right? the reporter she passed away a few years ago right, right? and yeah. so her family came out after yeah. richard jewel and they were really angry about the way they depicted her I was fine with it. I'm like, whatever. Like, if that's what you take away from that amazing story is a reporter that did whatever, you missed the point. Yeah, no kidding. Right. The movie is called <laughs> yeah. Richard Jewell, right? <laughs> but I think that that's the big thing is that like you were seeing some of these amazing directors. I've always been a huge fan of Tarantino. I will always watch anything that he puts out. Clint Eastwood is definitely one of those, but Sully was amazing. I Another story Sully, that needed man. to be told. Uh, one one people didn't watch was Trouble with the Curve, and I actually really enjoyed that. It it didn't do very well in theaters. Hey, JT, lot. that was yeah. Justin Timberlake, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. JT. Yeah. Hey, baseball. Yeah. Hey, baseball. <laughs> no, it was great, man. I really thing? liked that film, and I feel like nobody watched it. Right. And the few people who did were like, ew, not great. It was great. a female baseball scout? Yeah, yeah. Who was the female lead in that? Oh man, I cannot remember. It wasn't Jessica like to, Biel. Yeah, you, you're you're gonna have to get on IMDb. For that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. To, I, man, I can I can picture it. Amy Adams. Yeah, Amy it Adams. Amy, Ad- Amy oh. Adams. I love that. I mean, but you know, that's what like JT has been a big like. I love his acting. Alpha Dog, I think was his first movie he did, yeah. and it was awesome. Then you had him in. Uh, uh, Southland Tales, which I still don't. You talk about guilty pleasure. I've watched Southland Tales like five times. Nice, and I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> you, just, you know what movie no he's in that I've watched probably twenty times? Trolls. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back full circle. The Social Network. <laughs> the Social <laughs> Network. Oh, that's, oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a great movie. Yeah. Though. Great film. I don't know. Is it Friends with Benefits or is it the uh, the the oh, other with Mila one? Kunis. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that one a few times. Yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> Hey, JT and Mila Kunis, man. I like that's that's uh oh um don't that's don't forget inside Lewin Davis. 
Why haven't oh. you seen Inside Lewin Davis? Why? We, yeah. we just watched that one. Why haven't that you? That one was what, really good. What is, what is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, Coen Brothers movie about the um, a very sad sack folk musician living in the village, played by Oscar Isaac. Really? Oh, yeah. Adam Driver's in it, Justin yeah. Timberlake, um, Carrie Mulligan. Oscar Isaacs, uh, F. Adam Murray Driver's Abraham. In the Coen Brothers movie? Oh, yes. How yeah. have I missed this? It, <laughs> and he, he sings. He, he sings. does. He sings. Oh, that was funny. That and it's the one funny. where Oscar Isaac sings. He, he he's a great singer and no guitarist. <laughs> no. Yeah, Adam got Driver. A very deep singing oh. voice. You have to see. Carrie Mulligan sings in it. Oh my god! It's, it's wow, so it's great. good. No, I had never heard of it, and he made me soundtrack. watch it. Yeah, it was hmm. so good. But it it was very sad, and I was depressed when it ended. Like it made me just feel. Well, Sad spoiler, the dude. Whole time. I didn't spoil it. It's not like um, it's not like a movie that you like cry about though. Like right. it just gives just... you this internal sort of like just sadness. So but it's, it's a it comedy. A documentary? It's so a comedy. That's what I want to get yeah. back to right. Like yeah. we talk about Sully. We talk about Richard Jewell. Do you categorize them as a documentary or is it a, a, a fiction based? I mean, they're they're still technically narrative fiction, no matter how close they're going to follow a story or not. Okay. But Ultimately, it, it's a case by case basis because there's a lot of films that are based on a true story that aren't even close to what happened. Right. Yeah. Versus films that almost feel like a documentary. You know, they'll they'll do things that happen exactly as they did or or as reported by people. And then you have films like Midway which, mm. again, nobody watched, but <laughs> it feels over the top. But there are things that happen in that movie that critics were like, oh, my God, this is so over the top Hollywood. It actually, it actually happened. That's how it yeah. went down. Yeah, like there, there's one where there was a plane parked on the ship and some Japanese plane was coming in to do a bombing run and a crew member jumps in the plane and mans the gun on the back of the plane, shoots down the Japanese fighter, and it literally cuts the plane in half as it's crashing into the ocean and there was some critic who was like oh my god this is so over the top hollywood right, it's too far-fetched they yeah. shouldn't have and, and then the captain of the ship like comes down and like promotes him on the spot nice it feels like just overblown hollywood that That's happened what exactly happened? as that That's is portrayed crazy. in the movie. Yeah, you'd have to put that in the movie. That, <laughs> I mean, that's insane. It's just when you're watching it, you're like, this is the most unbelievable thing right. I've ever seen. We've been so desensitized. Like, that's like, Maybe that's whoever it, wrote yeah. that is a genius. I would never have thought about that. We've oh, seen it It's all. actually a real thing. No, it's not. Like, that would never really happen. <laughs> so I, I think it's it's such a case by case basis when you're when you're talking about narrative. But when you're talking about documentary, the exact opposite is true, where you have, in my opinion, a moral obligation mm -hmm. not to hype things up. You you need to be a little bit more earnest and genuine. Um, my wife is more in the documentary world, so I see a lot of documentaries. She's on two different docuseries on Netflix, and it's nuts, some of the vetting that they have to do to make sure every single detail mm. is correct like down to they're doing recree and one of the actors is smoking a cigarette and then they had to like call up all the real life people and be like did this guy smoke oh in real life hmm. because if he didn't smoke in real life they can't show him smoking a yeah. cigarette that's good to hear though that they put so much work into actually making sure yeah. the facts are straight though that's i mean like that's how it should be yeah absolutely if you're going to portray especially a real person you yeah. know I love it. I think uh, you, you said a moral obligation. I think of it as just integrity. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's absolutely. the personal integrity you have to tell the right story and for the right reasons. And I think that's what, when you have that narrative, that narrative fiction, you know, you can have that. And we kind of look at it like, did it happen? Uh, my biggest thing was the the trial of sh the Chicago Five. Seven. 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 You know, watching that. I'll be honest, like Sasha Baron Cohen just ruined it for me. Really? really? His, his Chicago or his accent in that is so bad. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Redmayne like in his. Favorite. Okay, we need to replace Carrie from the story to me. Like this is a real thing. <laughs> and when you talk about like Sasha Baron Cohen and it, it's, I mean, it, it is. And that's where we go with the brain popcorn. If you if you detach 
Uh, I, I I'm a total Sorkin fanboy. Me so. too. And it, but I, I couldn't like like listening to Sasha Baron Cohen in those monologues or doing his stand up comedy. It took away from the story that I wanted to hear and wanted to know. Really? Right. I didn't need the backstory. I'll be perfectly honest. Like I didn't know what happened. So that was my first time like being exposed to it and like watching that as entertainment. I really didn't feel like I understood the entire story and what really happened. But the real Abby Hoffman was a firecracker like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he went maybe a little bit more over the top with it because he is Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a complete stretch. Well, yeah. so, this, so this is my thing, right? So uh, one of my favorites, I think it's the fighter, right? With Mark Wahlberg, yep, 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 right? Yep. Christian Bale. Not you, not when, you. <laughs> when you see like the, the behind the scenes or like after the movie and you see the two of them side by side. Yeah. It is the same person. Yeah. Right. Them talking together. He's mirroring him pretty well. If you put Sasha Baron Cohen next to the real person, would it be a mirror image? I don't know. Abby Hoffman enough. To right. Know I, 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 I mean, there's, there's plenty right of now. documentary footage of him from the time that exists. Yeah. yeah. You I feel like, like I looked it up that. as soon as I watched it. Cause I do like to look up the actual people. But that, that's not, the thing, that's right? Is when you call it a narrative, that narrative fiction, my immediate thought after watching the content is I immediately get up and start Googling it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Too. And try to look for first, is there a real documentary on it that I can watch that gives me more of the integrity and the truth behind it? Uh, so I can really feel like that was a great replication or authentic portrayal i love it when they show you in the credits like the photos of right. um, yeah. the actual people yep. or yeah. like newsreel footage or whatever they might have of, about you know the real yeah that's always about hoffman, what you just watched yeah hoffman, yeah, i love hoffman it when they do that kaufman wrote that he wrote steal this book didn't he uh steal was this either one? steal this book steal this book or is it steal this movie I think it was steal this book, and then I and think then they made then steal this. Steal this they movie, made steal yeah. this movie. Yep. I just remember that was my first experience of. We found that in the like library when I was in like Who elementary school. <laughs> Abby Hoffman. Abby Hoffman. Uh, oh, the, the character, or yeah. the, not the character, the actual person. The actual person, oh, and it had all these. <laughs> it had a real person that did those real things. <laughs> it, it, it had all these like tips for like sneaking, like past the government and getting things for free and doing all these like it had all these. So it was banned from a lot of places and stuff. So the question is, did you steal it? Yeah. So I so I did not steal the book, but I did try one of the things from the book when I was in middle school. Nice. It had um. What did, what did you try? <laughs> it was so stupid. Yeah, exactly. School. It was so dumb. Here's how you can get away with leaving your class. <laughs> so we figured out that if you if you mailed your friend a letter, but you put your address as um, if you put their address as the return right. address, and then you didn't put a stamp on it, mm. they get the letter for free. So my friend and I would just mail each other letters all the time, oh, nice. putting the other person's as their like, Did you guys live like next to each other though? No, it was like across town. <laughs> so dumb. And we're like, yeah. Hey, we God, your letters are coming a few days. The first time that letter showed up in the mail, I was like, whoa, that actually worked. <laughs> That's crazy. We just overthrew the government. We just overthrew the government. <laughs> wow. So Rudy, um, we have a minute left about, and I want to ask you one question, if that's okay, Carrie. Hey, it's all you, so man. we've talked about all of the people that you could potentially meet at uh, Tallgrass and other film festivals. Um, let's say you met the actor or actress with whom you would most love to work. Um, cost is not a factor. Their time is not a factor. Um, who is that actor or actress? Well, Jimmy Stewart's dead. <laughs> okay. The living one, because I asked Greg Sestero the same question during the Q&A last night that he did and um he he said living or dead and i was like okay doesn't matter and his was brando oh. so jimmy stewart but who who living man that's such a tough one because there's so many actors that uh i i would absolutely love to work with um you know there's actually a bollywood actor Khan, okay oh. and he's probably one of the most famous actors in the world being that he's out of bollywood you know India has an audience of, you know, literally like a billion and a half people. Uh, but he's he's been in a couple of Hollywood movies, but usually really small roles. I would love to see him in a leading role in a proper Hollywood film. Excellent. Uh, he's a phenomenal actor. So awesome. Him. He's like the Tom Cruise of India. 
So that's write a, that's something a great for answer. him. Yeah. Yeah. Write something for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So obviously be- before we bounce out of here and get you out to your, your next thing, how, how what's the next thing for Prunes? You said Utah, right? Yep. Provo, Utah for Film Quest. Okay. Yep. Is there a way for people to see it on, on a digital market yet? Or is it still just doing this the film circuit I, and then i have to keep it off the internet so i can get into film festivals okay. but as soon as that is done um absolutely of course tall grass is doing virtual so yep. you can watch it virtually at tall grass oh, it's also at the uh, netherland film festival which project Ooh. nerd is covering yeah, and um, we're doing interviews for that and uh that is on november 6th so perfect that's awesome and look out for chippy yeah, I mean, <laughs> chippy, chippy. I mean, bonus thing. Hey, watch Prudence get chippy on the side. Hey guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for hanging thank out. You, with yeah. you, for you hung me. out with us for a long time. That was, was, yeah, was so was cool. This is fun. You're, you're absolutely amazing. We really appreciate it. Again, we really appreciate you guys tuning in. We're gonna take a short break. We'll be right back with more exclusive content from the 19th annual Tallgrass Film Festival here in Wichita, Kansas.